Are you interested in vintage clothing, secondhand shopping, the reselling community, history, or all of the above? Then this is the show for you. My name is Rebecca, and I'm here to talk to you about other people's things. I'm here not only to discuss the material aspect of clothing, but our relationship to society, to other people's things, and how we go about obtaining them, selling them, finding them, and sharing them. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about something that has been weighing heavily on me, and I've been getting a lot of questions about this from some of my followers on Instagram. And before I go into my topic of the day, I wanted to just say that I'm suffering from some allergies and there's got to be something in the air because my whole family is feeling sniffly in the house and I'm going to be a little bit stuffy, so I hope you can understand what I'm saying and please forgive me if I am not my peppy, clear-voiced self. I'm doing the best I can, and I was determined to show up today to still film an episode because it's important to me. So let's just do the best we can, and I'm going to make it work. I also wanted to talk a little bit about my outfit. I'm super excited about this outfit. I received this suit in a trade from my friend Brana, and it is a really special suit. It is a green it's like emerald green with this really nice yellow lapel and you can uh, actually take it off. It's safety pinned into the suit. So if you wanted to remove it and add a different type of collar or just go collarless, which actually was a thing um, in some of the mid 40s suits I've seen, they just kind of don't have a collar, which is cool. That means you can mix and match and add in whatever different types of collars, detachable or just put a shirt underneath and work with that and you can get a variety of fantastic fresh looks without having to buy a whole new suit. And women were so clever for doing this back then. What I did is I kept the lapels and I added a an analogous color scheme to the outfit which is a slightly lighter shade of yellow. This is my husband's um, shirt that I borrowed. It is one of those loop collar 50s shirts and I borrowed his because I'm still in the process of making my own um, collared 40s shirt collection and all I have right now in the woman's size is a white one so that works for some things, many things, but I wanted some color. So he was so nice to allow me to borrow his shirt. And I didn't ask, but he ended up saying it was fine. So I think he's okay with it. And I wore that underneath. And then I wore this really cool, um, I think it's a 1930s glass bead necklace in green and um, my friend Michaela made this really beautiful 1940s brooch out of ribbon and this feels like wool some sort of wool I don't know it's really cool it's super cute I love it I appreciate it so much and again analogous color scheme going with that and wearing a butter yellow hat that kind of matches my shirt. So hopefully if you're listening, you can see what I'm talking about. But if not, I'm going to upload a photo to my Instagram of my outfit so you can see what I'm talking about here. I hope I described it well. And because of a few requests I've had from my friends, I decided to put the hat back on over my headphones and try and make it work because apparently some of you are very delighted to see this layered uh, <laughs> I don't want to say monstrosity because it doesn't look bad at all, but it's definitely a feat that I have to balance carefully and pin into place very carefully to make sure it doesn't slide off my head or look very goofy. So if you're watching, I did it and I feel pretty good about it. Love to wear these hats. It kind of adds a, a layer of confidence to, to my look and my outfit. It, it was really fun wearing wearing green today and just color coordinating. When you're really put together, it's like you're on fire and there's nothing that can stop you, not even allergies. So 
I'm going to get down to the topic of the day. After all of that small talk chit chat that I hope you appreciated, it's going to be about what do we do when a purchase goes wrong and how do we handle confrontation online from a reseller, a small business who sells and distributes vintage clothing, accessories, etc. And I decided to talk about this subject because whenever I first ended up posting about reselling and price gouging, I received so many messages from followers and people who I've never spoke to or heard of before, just pouring into my inbox, talking about how they've had these experiences with many well-known and not so well-known resellers who are prevalent on Instagram and Etsy, who, um, and they also, some of them have their own websites, but most of them have an Instagram. And the thing that troubled me so much about this is these customers were coming to me saying that they have avoided leaving reviews or have left five star reviews, not because they have had pleasant transactions, but because they were afraid to be honest. And to me, that was a glaring red flag because typically in our society, you see the customers as the ones who have the advantage. That's why there's the misconception that the buyer determines the price. And if it sells, then of course it should be worth whatever they were asking because someone was willing to buy it. And I can see how there is that assumption out there. And I could see why people would think that, but I'm noticing that it's, it's not always true. And I'm seeing things selling for a lot of money and I'm talking to people who have purchased things for even what they considered to be too much. And they weren't even happy about having to pay so much. They just felt like it was their only option. And then the people who've been contacting me are very unhappy because they spent all that money, sometimes spent a ton for shipping. And then suddenly what happens is they receive the item and they discover there's something very wrong with it, sometimes beyond repair. And most people, when you buy something new, not used items, there's usually a manufacturer that you can go to, a, a company, a business, and they have to be accountable to you in a way. And you're usually dealing with customer service representatives, not the direct owner of these businesses. And there's usually a return system or a refund system in place to help people whose orders have been damaged because they recognize how important it is to take good care of your customers. But what we see happening here is something very strange. We're seeing resellers who usually it's like a one woman, typically women show who it's the same person dealing with buying, shipping, selling, marketing, sometimes photos. And they're also the customer service representative. So you have a lot wrapped up in one package, which is a lot of work, but you don't have a chain of people to go through. You're just dealing with this one person. And if you are having a difficult experience, either it can be very pleasant or very difficult, and there's no one else you can go to to get help from, usually. Um, if you're on Etsy, sometimes you can go through them and make a complaint or you can leave a bad review. But the issue is a lot of the people here in the vintage community, they know these resellers. They both have online presences. And sometimes some of these resellers can be straight up bullies if you do not like what you've received, if you don't feel good about the transaction. And they seem to have a way with words to sometimes make the customers feel like it was their fault fault even. And if you don't have that much experience with vintage, if you're an occasional buyer and you're buying from one of these resellers and there's a problem with your item, it's very easy to take their word for it and think that you're the problem or that this is normal. And I'm here today to tell you what is normal and what is not normal to hopefully help you from getting yourself into a pickle and losing a lot of money and also feeling demoralized and like you don't want to come back to wearing vintage because you've had such a poor experience with this, with the seller. So 
We've all been there. You order an item and it's mislabeled or the condition is not as described or there's something wrong. Maybe the item shows up damp or damaged or smelly or broken beyond repair. What if there's a piece missing that wasn't described as being missing? What if it was there in the photos, but it's not there when you receive the item? What are you going to do? I just want to tell one story that I have personally of my own experience with eBay. So this was for reenactment gear. It was a purse that I purchased and it was a whack purse. So a basic brown bag basically, but they're very hard to find original these days. And they are considered to be worth a lot of money because they're so rare. I kind of discounted ever being able to afford one that was an original. So I bought a reproduction whack purse. The seller told me that it was never used. It was put in storage. It was his wife's. She never got a chance to take it out. So I was expecting to receive an item that was basically new um, and ready to go. And when I received it, the box was packaged very well. It arrived very quickly. And I opened the box, and the second I open it, this stench of rotten, bacterial, moldy basement, but like next to a dying animal or something, it was so bad. And it was just the inside of the box. The outside wasn't damaged at all. And I opened it, and I couldn't even keep it inside the house. It was so bad, I almost started retching. It was such a horrible smell, and I ended up taking it outside opening up the purse, the inside smelled worse. So I could tell it was maybe stored with something damp inside and maybe a basement. Anyways, I had to keep it outside. It was just so awful. And the purse itself was obviously used a few times because it just smelled so bad. And he lied saying it was new. So that was an issue, number one. And what I did is I gave the seller a chance to make it right first because I believe in doing that. I don't think you should just post a bad review if there's a problem without trying to resolve the problem with the seller first because you never know. Um, I'd like to think that they would want to help. And this guy was very offended that I had an issue. He said, I asked him first if it was stored in the basement and he said, absolutely not. I asked him why it would smell bad. And he told me that it had to have been an issue with the post office. Something must have happened where it got wet during shipping and it suddenly within the span of two days managed to smell like something that had been molding for a very, very long time. And he basically got very irate with me and typed in all caps, which is internet for yelling. And he said that I should be grateful that he spent a little bit extra in shipping than I paid for to get it to me quickly and faster out of his own pocket. And basically, how dare you complain to me because I spent money out of my own pocket to get it to you more quickly. And I told him, you know, I appreciate that it got there fast, but you chose to spend more for shipping. And the fact that you chose to spend more for shipping means that it's very unlikely that something would have happened during shipping to make it smell so bad because it got there lightning fast. So with that, I told him that and that kind of shut him up quickly (laughs) because you're basically proving his own argument wrong. And you could tell that he was guilty and he just knew that he was busted and he didn't want to admit that he sold me something faulty and disgusting. So after me threatening him, not exactly threatening him, I just said, I'm going to take it to eBay if you aren't going to help me because he wasn't going to give me a refund. He wasn't going to help me. And finally, after I told him I was going to do that, that's when he refunded me. And he actually said to return the purse and then he would be able to give me the refund. Whatever. It was fine. I didn't want it anyways, but You could just tell it it was not handled well, and it definitely is the kind of experience that would make someone want to think twice before ever bringing up an issue, ever saying, hey, there's something wrong, because naturally when we do this, we're looking for help. We are looking for compassion. We are looking for someone to connect with, to, to just 
make us feel like it was worth what we spent. And whenever resellers act this way, it's very dismissive. It puts a bad taste in the customer's mouth. It makes us question our own reality because he's telling us something very different from what we know to be the truth. And it makes you almost hesitant to bring things up again because you're being conditioned to respond to things or actually to not respond to things at all because you were afraid of pushback and you were afraid of being punished for speaking what you know to be the truth in a situation. And the worst thing you could do is ignore that. So I luckily do know that. So I worked very hard to advocate for myself, but it did give me that anxiety, adrenaline feeling, having to deal with this man who was just difficult all around the board. And it wasn't a good experience. It was very unpleasant. And I felt very angry that I was being treated that way. So we're going to move this to examining how some of the vintage resellers in the clothing community are doing the same thing and what they do basically same thing that happened to me is they are gaslighting their customers to challenge their reality of what they know to be true and what they have experienced to benefit them and to keep them from accepting responsibility which is what this is all about so when people act defensively and they don't want to help you even when it's their fault they're going to do anything they can to convince you that you are the issue, that you don't know what you're talking about, you're not experienced enough with vintage, that you must have made a mistake somewhere because they couldn't possibly be wrong. And the scary thing is, is I was looking at a very popular reseller on Etsy. I was looking through her reviews and I saw most of them were five stars. But when I actually read the content of these reviews, many of them were showing me that the experience was not five stars. For example, this was on FabGab's Etsy shop. You can find it directly on the site, and I am directly reading from some of the people who purchased from her. Quote, I really wanted to like these shoes and the shop. When I purchased these, I was under the impression that they were in good condition. The only damaged in included in the description had to do with the suede and the soles. This is understandable and to be expected. However, when they arrived, I immediately noticed that the bow on the top of the left shoe had partially snapped off and had become detached. As soon as I noticed, I contacted the seller. I did not ask for a refund, but instead informed her of the damage and asked if there was anything she could do. She became extremely combative with me and suggested I fixed the shoes myself. Perhaps this is an easy fix, but I definitely would not have purchased had I known that I would have to make repairs before I even got the chance to try the shoes on. And I'm not going to read the entire response, but I just want to highlight how the owner handled the situation. So first she began by calling the customer combative back, even though the customer said that about her first. So she was flipping the narrative on her to, I think... Uh, shed the blame from her own shoulders to put the focus back on the customer as the one who was wrong when clearly why would she go out of her way to write this paragraph about a pair of discount shoes she bought from the seller if there wasn't a true problem she insisted and I am kind of paraphrasing here that she was wasting her time complaining and that she should just glue the bow back on herself and she refused to offer her a partial refund or anything for her trouble which I understand that gluing a bow back onto a shoe would be an easy fix for some people but when you're a customer and you're buying from a listing from a used for a used item you are counting on the description to be as accurate as possible. And that is a glaring discrepancy. If something is missing, broken, detached, if there's holes where there weren't supposed to be, that needs to be discussed. And we all make mistakes sometimes. You're not gonna catch every single thing all the time, but take responsibility if you make that mistake. And what I noticed was the owner of this shop did not take responsibility. She kind of turned it back around on the customer and 
basically just sounded like she was complaining about the customer in her response, not handling it maturely. And here's another one. This person left her five stars. She said the code arrived in excellent packaging and condition was mostly as described. There's a stressed seam in the lining at the waist and a stain on the corner of the lining that I think should have been included in the description. However, none of these detract from the quality as it isn't visible when worn and does not contribute to structural issues. The coat does keep me warm. It's gotten numerous compliments. So this person still gave five stars, even though the seams were stressed and there was a stain. And again, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but this is something that should have been noted when you're examining an item to list it. And if there's stains and seams that are stressed, things that you're not repairing, how are you selling these items for so much money? It's very odd. Another one is five stars, but she said, high quality item that matched the description. Um, this did have a few seam rips, which I didn't remember from the description, but that is probably my bad. I can't go back and look at the description now. So this contradicts itself. She said high quality and match the description. But then she also said this had a few rips in the seams, which I don't remember from the description. So it sounds like she's saying that she, I mean, she's gaslighting herself. She's saying that's probably my fault, which I think most customers, not all of them, of course, but most people who are reasonable are first going to jump to blaming themselves or thinking, let me make sure there's something that I didn't miss before I go and complain. And this is what this woman is doing. And she gave her five stars anyways. So I think that if you go and look at her reviews, then you're going to see a lot of this. Um, one of them says, <laughs> this is from a different seller. This is from Dear Golden's page, her Etsy. Uh, someone said, beautiful dress, great, great quality for vintage. Only issue was a relatively sizable hole under the right arm that I did not see mentioned in the listing. Um, not a huge deal for me, but we'll need to arrange a way to mend. And to me, you know, I think she docked her a star for this, but that's a big problem. A large hole under the right arm that wasn't described and you're still charging hundreds and hundreds of dollars for dresses. That's unacceptable. And, you know, I have so much compassion for some of these women who have purchased from these sellers and anybody else who has purchased from these sellers and if you are really feeling like this is your fault and this is not that big of a problem and you deserve or they deserve hundreds and hundreds of dollars for these dresses that have holes, rips, stress, seams, stains, no, you don't have to put up with that. That's not normal. They should be giving you a partial refund for the repairs that you need to make to these, whether it's through your time or your money. And this is why I'm talking about this, because so many people seem to believe it's their fault. And if you go back a while in some of the reviews under Fab Gabs' shop, I've noticed that so many people are so quick to say, well, she's the expert. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm going to trust her that this was my fault, that I didn't catch it. Maybe I don't know the eras or what I'm talking about because this actually seems like it's from a different era than what is described. And how are you calling yourself an expert if you are a shop owner and you are frequently enough making mistakes? And I've said this before, we all make mistakes. No one's going to know everything. Some items are very challenging to date. But I've seen examples where if you look hard enough, you can find dates on the tags from some of these items that people have sold from a different era, later dates. So just know this is to all potential prospective customers to any of these resellers. Not everyone is going to be right all the time. Unless you're going to like a certified auction house with um, very experienced uh, people who can date these and appraise these items, museum types, I think that if they're not like that and they're just selling um, used vintage clothing on Etsy or Instagram, take everything with a grain of salt. Trust yourself. Trust your own research and do your own research because sometimes they're wrong. And I think that every good seller should be 
leaving the opportunity open to have a dialogue about that in the case that they have made a mistake because it happens to the best of us. Humans are flawed and that's okay. But what's not okay is attacking someone for bringing up a very valid concern or question, accusing them of being wrong, shutting them down, shaming them on your Instagram for asking you a question like, hey, is this, this doesn't seem like the right date for this. I have proof. I have a picture. And then they shame them for it, for even daring to open their mouth and challenge their authority, which is wrong. And we need to be doing something about this and talking about this. So one more review that I'd like to read from Dear Golden's shop. Uh, shipping was fast. However, there was a hole in the USPS envelope. The dress was mailed in and some of the fabric was sticking out of it. So that shows improper packaging. When I pulled the dress out, it had a strong odor of cigarette smoke and something else I couldn't quite place. Unfortunately, it was also extremely wrinkled. I expressed my concerns to the seller and got a speedy response with some recommendations to remedy the wrinkles in the smell, which I appreciated. She gathered that the packaging got damaged in route and subjected to the elements while on the mailing truck since she said it came from a smoke-free home and had been steamed. I guess for an expensive or fragile 30s dress this length, I expected it to be wrapped in tissue paper and boxed. Still working on the issues and haven't worn it yet. It's really pretty and hoping it can be fixed. I just would love to talk to this person because there is so much wrong here. And I feel bad that she was duped by this seller into thinking that this is a normal experience. It is not. The whole is not a normal experience. It should be shipped in a way that protects the garment. Accidents happen sometimes. That's not even the worst part of it. Um, when she pulled the dress out and it had a strong odor of cigarette smoke, that means that it came from a home that somebody was smoking in. Now, it might not be the warehouse that she keeps her stuff in. She has a big warehouse of items, but it could have been from the person she got it from, which means that she wasn't washing these things properly or steaming them or airing them out properly. And of course, she's not going to take responsibility for that because I've talked to her and dealt with her and she's a very difficult person, in my opinion. Um, she cannot take criticism and we have not had positive interactions, so I'm not surprised that she is not taking responsibility for this. But if it smells like smoke, if it's extremely wrinkled, that means it wasn't steamed. That means it wasn't washed. That means she probably had it in storage somewhere and didn't really take the time to take care of the item properly and just send it to you as is. And her dresses are usually hundreds of dollars. Um, and that's 200 at the lower end. There's some that are a little cheaper than that, I'm sure, but I would need to examine everything. And I'm used to seeing at least 300, 400, $500 for a 30s dress. It's going to be a pricey one. So I'm guessing she paid a lot of money for this dress. And the fact that it arrived to her in such despicable condition and Dear Golden did not take responsibility for this item says to me that she did not get the experience that she deserved buying something like this. And I'm warning anyone who is listening and wants to buy and procure a vintage collection that this is not acceptable behavior. And I'm pretty sure she only gave her three stars out of five, which is still more than she deserved. And she didn't even get a partial refund. In this situation, I think the dress should have been partially refunded to accommodate the fees that it would take to clean and mend this item. Actually, it doesn't need mending, but to clean it and steam it out, it takes time. So I'm just giving you all a picture of what I'm seeing and noticing. There's many other reviews that are questionable. I could go through them for hours, but I wanted to pick some that stood out to me that are more recent to show you that this is happening right now in the current time. And, you know, I think it's gotten to the point where they feel so comfortable. They are established. They have many followers. They don't feel, I think the quality control has been slipping for quite some time. And the issue is, is they are so confident in the platform that they have that they're not treating their customers who are not happy very well. And that's not okay. It's really not. And there was another uh, one more I'll talk about from 
Germantes vintage. I think that's how you pronounce it. But she was selling a 30s sailor dress years ago that had a rip in the front hem. I have pictures of this. She bought it for very little. I think it was under 50 on eBay and then flipped it for hundreds of dollars. And it still had the rip that she never even bothered to fix, which I think is absolutely just amazing that she was able to do that. And no one complained or if they did, I didn't catch it. So I could be wrong there, but this is the standard now. And as consumers, we have the right to vote with our dollar. We have the right to say something if something is wrong and we should absolutely be taken care of and respected. And my goal here is to at least be an advocate to um, facilitate and encourage customers to speak up if something is either too expensive um, I think it's okay to tell a seller that this is too high and, you know, I don't think it's okay. I don't appreciate it. But most importantly, I think if you do make a purchase, you need to have an advocate or at least feel confident to speak up if something is wrong. So they say, a lot of resellers say things like, you know, you don't know vintage. You're, <laughs> you're the problem. I have all this experience. It's not that hard to know vintage. If you ever have a question, you can come to me. Or, you know, it's not hard to just look up basic silhouettes and styles and trust your gut because there's a lot of people selling uh, more modern things like 80s does 40s, but they're not saying that it's 80s. They're saying it's 40s. So it's so important. If there's any interest, if anybody would like for me to break down what might set something apart from that to be on the lookout for faulty or mislabeled items. I'd love to talk about it, maybe a future episode. So people aren't leaving accurate, accurate reviews because we're doubting ourselves, our expertise and our reality whenever we are manipulated by these um, sellers and their words. And that's not okay. I think most people, like I said, want harmony. They want um, to get along and if we're friends on Instagram with these resellers or follow them and we see them as a person, we're less likely to leave a bad review on their business because we care about them as a person. We think we might have a chance of being friends with them or like rubbing elbows because a lot of them are kind of status oriented. So you see them um, rubbing elbows with famous people and you think to yourself like, wow, this person must know what they're talking about. They must be this great person. I don't think that's necessarily true, but I can see how it's intimidating to want to cause cause trouble with them or make trouble for them or stress out their business because they talk a lot about how um, you should feel sorry for them because they are small business owners and one bad review could ruin their entire business and they really play on that. But I think it's all about accountability. If you're going to act badly, if you're not going to respect your customers, you have to see consequences. You know, it might be time for a new job if you can't handle that. And it's a privilege to be in that position and sell vintage and deal in it and work with beautiful things all day. It really is. And what do we do then? How do we tell if it's our fault or not? Um, I wanted to talk about that. So it is our fault if we damage the item once it is in our hands. If we try on a dress too roughly or too hastily and it rips while we're putting it on over our head. If we don't measure ourselves accurately and leave a few uh, inches of room for fit and ease, then it is our fault if it rips, if it doesn't fit right because we mismeasured ourselves. Um, if we buy something too small, hoping it will fit and it doesn't, that's our fault as a customer. I don't expect resellers to give somebody a refund because the customer mismeasured it, but things should be priced well enough to where somebody has to resell it. They're not taking a big loss because I do think that vintage should have, um, a baseline like resale value. If you're going to like charge a certain amount for it. Uh, and if it doesn't, if you're selling it for too much and someone can't resell it for a similar price, then there is a problem there. So if we spill something on it or decide we don't like it anymore once it arrives, we're like, oh, well, I'm not as crazy about it in person, not because the photos are inaccurate, but just because you changed your mind, then that's your fault too. So I'm not saying everybody should be leaving bad reviews or approaching resellers willy nilly, even if nothing is that wrong, or if we do something and we don't want to take responsibility, that's not what I'm saying. Um, I'm saying that 
we need to think about what is valid of a concern and what is not, what is our fault and what is not. So that's what is our fault. What is not our fault? And this is for all of you newbies or people who are inexperienced or those who have felt afraid to leave reviews. It is not your fault if the item arrives to you differently than described. If, if it is too small, if it is too large and you measured yourself appropriately, compared it to the measurements on the page and there is a discrepancy, that is not your fault. That should be brought to the reseller. People make mistakes, so do they. If the item is stained, if there are spots on it, if there's pit stains on it that weren't described, if there's markings on it that weren't described, if the item is smelly, if it smells like cigarettes, if it smells like mildew, if it smells like mold, if it smells like mothballs, if it smells like anything that isn't air. <laughs> Um, sometimes things do have like an old clothing kind of smell, like wool can sometimes have like a bit of just like a distinct smell, but it's never anything bad like mildew or mold. Uh, so it's important to discern, uh, and check the description, see if they say if it smells like mothballs strongly or something like that. Uh, sometimes it just takes a little bit of airing out to get it back to normal. And it's not necessarily a lost cause if it smells. But sometimes I have talked to a woman who has posted on my Instagram who said that she received something so smelly. She took it to the cleaners. Nothing could get those smells out. And she had to basically throw away a dress that she spent hundreds of dollars for plus much more in shipping because she's in a different country. If the dress shows up and it's dirtier than listed, if it's rumpled, if it's crumpled, if it seems just dirty and uncleaned and dingy and it wasn't described that way, then that's the reseller's fault. If there's damage, a rip, a hole that wasn't talked about, um, you know, I'm not talking about like maybe a minuscule pinhole or something that you might not see. That's something you could use to your discretion to bring up, but I'm talking about a hole in the armpit or holes in stress spots where the seams are going to be strained. Um, if that wasn't talked about, then you definitely need to be contacting the reseller because you need a partial refund or maybe a full refund, depending on how bad they are, because those things are not always easy to fix. A popped seam, popped multiple popped seams that weren't described. Also, that's the reseller's fault. They should be examining every seam that they can and making sure that things aren't unraveling. So when the buyer tries it on, they aren't like, oh no, I have to go and fix this before I can even enjoy it. Because some people buy vintage and they don't have that much sewing expertise, which I would argue, if you're going to enjoy vintage and wear it and collect it, then you should know a little bit about basic sewing. But still, we are buying something from a reseller who's charging a lot of money. We expect it to arrive in wearable sound condition, mend it up and strong and ready to wear unless stated otherwise. And yeah, it, it's going to take some time to learn those basic sewing skills and know that vintage is fragile and sometimes things pop. And sometimes we miss seams that are not super strong, but if you're doing the most you can, then you're not going to run into that issue too much. If it is advertised as sturdy, but too delicate to wear, I have been in that situation before, then it's important to bring that up and it's important to try and do something about that because what are you going to do with a dress that you can't even wear? That's not your fault. And the issue is a lot of people have came to me saying that they have bought dresses and the photos, it has a belt or like a matching piece to it. And then they'll receive the item or go to pick it up and that matching piece or belt is gone. Where did it go? The reseller sometimes ignores it. Sometimes they say, oh, that's not true. Or sometimes they'll just say, deal with it. And, you know, if it's missing an integral piece of the outfit, then that is warranted a partial refund. It just is. And, you know, as buyers, as customers, it is our right to be treated well and receive an accurate garment from the listing. And if it's not happening, then you need to say something. I would 
like you to say something. I think you would feel better if you would say something. So what to do? How do we bring this up? Because no one wants to start a fight online. No one wants to be in a difficult situation and be attacked or look like a jerk. But advocating for yourself is liberating. It's empowering. It helps you feel good about your purchase and your relationship with the buyer. So what can you do? You can have honest, clear communication. You can state exactly what happened and the condition upon receiving it. So if you receive something that wasn't in good condition, that was damaged, different from the description, you would just say, hi, I received the item. It, I looked through the listing and reread it. And you can even show them receipts. And it says here that this garment was in perfect condition. But whenever I received it, it has holes here, here, and here. And it smells like cat pee. And, you know, just as an example, I hope no one has to deal with that. I hope no one receives something that smells like cat pee. But you're going to state exactly what happened, the condition you received it in. And, you know, it's... I think it's good to just be like, hey, I received it this way. It's stated this way. Show them proof, take photos, compare it to the listing. And then I would just say, what can you do for me? This isn't, ex you know, you don't have to even be like, hey, this isn't acceptable. I need a refund. You don't even have to approach it that way. I think it's better to approach it in like a manner that shows you are expecting the best and then wait and see what happens. Use eye language such as, I was disappointed, I was let down, I, I'm i upset, don't say, you did this to me, you made me feel that way, because whenever you're accusing other people of doing certain things, you're kind of assuming their intention, and sometimes we're not correct there. So just taking responsibility for yourself, your feelings, your emotions around this, if it escalates to that, calmly and clearly stating the problem and letting the seller resolve it first before leaving a bad review. We already talked about that. Go to them first. The worst that could happen is they are difficult and then you can escalate it from there. I think it's good to give them a chance to make it right. And if they don't, then I think we have a responsibility to warn other community members. We're a small community and I appreciate it. Other people appreciate it whenever we uh, are honest about our experiences and look out for each other. Um, a good way to do this is, you know, if you don't follow me on Instagram already, my username is Rebecca Laurel. You can always message me asking me for my opinion, advice. I can always share it in my stories and ask other people. You can join my Facebook group. You can post about it. Just be vocal. I think that so many people are quiet. They're afraid to speak up when something is wrong. They don't want to be shamed. They don't want to be ridiculed. I'm here to tell you, you won't be. And there's lots of support out there for you. Ask other community members if they know anything about the seller, what their opinion is of the situation. Sometimes uh, there are many experiences that add up and you're not going to be alone. You're never alone in this. And you might be surprised or empowered to know that, oh, other people have had this problem. So I'm always going to encourage you to say something and try and find a solution that way because it does let other people know it keeps them from being mistreated or abused. And you're not only doing this for yourself, but for others. And whenever you do make a negative review, state the facts to make it more credible, the most credible as possible. You want to state the facts. You want to state why it was wrong, their behavior, um, or how they treated you. You could use direct quotes of how they treated you and why it wasn't okay. Directly state the facts of what the condition was or what's wrong with the item, uh, what you're not happy about. Be confident and direct about it and don't doubt yourself or second guess your reality. If you're sure that something wasn't listed and it comes a different way, say that. If if the seller responds condescendingly or in a rude way, just know that you're making a difference by saying something. Don't take what they say as fact. It's not necessarily true just because they're upset that you are saying something. They are probably just threatened by the fact that you're speaking up for yourself and they don't want anyone to get in the way of the image they're projecting, which is very important to them. But honesty 
is and the customer is more important than the image that this shop is projecting. And they need to be held accountable for that and they need to be responsible for their behavior. You're making a difference by showing potential customers what this person is like and how they handle their customers. That's going to save other people a lot of grief, anxiety, stress, and it feels good to stand up for them and yourself. Just because somebody says they're an authority doesn't mean it's true. Ask around. The vintage community has many experts. Many of us who are hobbyists and enthusiasts know just as much or sometimes more as a lot of the resellers who claim to be the authority here. And that's something a lot of vintage enthusiasts have in common is we love to research. We love to think about what people were wearing and to recreate those outfits as accurately and truly as possible. And we love to share in that. So if you're ever doubtful or wondering if this is right, if an outfit is correct, whatever, I think that reaching out and asking some other people in the community, you're going to be very pleasantly surprised and see that there's a lot of help out there and guidance and enthusiasm for, for the truth. And I just want everybody to feel comfortable in that. So I hope that this episode was helpful. I hope that you learned a bit about communication skills. If you, if anybody's curious or would like even a sample template of how to bring up something whenever there is an issue, feel free to message me. I'm here to help. I just want everyone to feel comfortable and confident and to feel like this is a community that they can feel very safe expressing themselves in and reaching out to others and making those true connections. And I just want us all to be able to problem solve together. There's something wrong. And I think that some of the more abusive resellers kind of count on us not saying anything whenever there's something wrong, because I think as humans, we desire harmony. Um, a lot of us were raised to avoid conflict, which isn't healthy. Um, and I think sometimes if there is actually something wrong, uh, choosing the route of constructive, healthy conflict or confrontation is actually much better for us. So let's all band together and appreciate the resources that this community has to offer and not be afraid to stand up if something is wrong and to say something and express um our grievances whenever we are mistreated. And the more we can all do this confidently, the better and stronger this community will become, the less power imbalances there will be. And I think that it could just be so much of a better place. So thank you for joining me today. And please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, um, and follow everything that I'm doing. And I'd love to hear from you and what you think. So thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. No!